everyone. My name is Cassidy. I am the registered dietitian that works with HealthLink's Food as Medicine program. Today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about food safety. It's important to take precaution when we're preparing our food so we do not end up sick or getting anybody else sick. So the first step that we need to do is Practice good hand hygiene with washing your hands. This should be done anytime you use the bathroom, anytime you touch your face, before you eat, um, and if you're in high traffic areas such as touching a doorknob or the gas pump, those kind of situations. So step one is to turn on the water, get your hands wet, apply a good soap, uh, get a good lather going. Scrub your hands really, really good. I want you to make sure you get your wrists as well and scrub in between your fingers, underneath your nails. It should be about 20 seconds long. So you can sing the happy birthday song twice, maybe your ABCs twice or just count to 20 you know take, keep it simple um, so after you're done washing your hands it's important to grab a paper towel and turn off the faucet with the towel now if you don't remember to do this step you could always turn it off with your elbow that way you're not recontaminating your hands with turning off the faucet the next thing I wanted to jump into was um, appropriate cutting boards and knife skills. So using a different cutting board for fresh foods and meats and products like that, because if you take something raw and then cut your vegetables on top of it, it's going to contaminate that cutting board and the knife as well. So using separate knives when you cut up chicken and using a different cutting board when you're going in between products. The next thing I wanted to talk about was uh, food temperature safety. So cooking your animal proteins to appropriate temperatures. This ensures that all the bacteria included in different meats are cooked thoroughly. So starting off with 145 degrees, this would be recommended for anything related to fish fillets, pork, beef cuts, things like that. Um, and then the next stage is 160 degrees. That's going to be for your ground meats or any kind of egg dishes. So if you were to make like an egg casserole or something with eggs inside, 165 degrees is recommended for any poultry products. So this is for chicken, for um, turkey, and duck. This is also recommended for your leftovers, which I know sounds crazy, right? 165 degrees, that sounds like really hot. If my chicken has to be cooked 165 degrees, my leftovers do too. So if you think about it, our leftovers are stored in a refrigerator for up to four days. This gives it time for a possible bacteria to grow. So we wanna make for sure that we're really cooking those leftovers thoroughly. Um, and even thinking about it further, we typically use the microwave for leftovers, right? Well, that's gonna become a complication because you really, really wanna get that food hot instead of just kind of warm when you're reheating your foods that are left over. The next section I wanna talk about is the storage appropriation in your fridge. So the top of your fridge should be all your fresh stuff, fruits, vegetables, maybe your dairy goes here. And then as we work into the middle of the fridge, this could be where leftovers are stored, but the bottom of the fridge should really be where your fresh meats are. Say if you go to the grocery store today and you buy some chicken, some turkey, fish, that all should sit at the bottom of your fridge. The reason for this is because we don't want any kind of drippings to fall onto other foods. So if you were to put chicken on the top of your fridge, you're taking that chance of something dripping onto your fresh items, which would take even harder you know, amount of effort to thoroughly wash them so you don't get sick. So when we're cooling our foods after cooking, we should really separate them in different containers instead of just trying to let them cool in the pot that we cooked them in. Um, and when you divide it up, you're, you're allowing them to cool faster. Uh, make sure you don't fill up the container too much because that would take longer as well. We only get really two hours to take our food from the temperature it's at, you know, around 140 degrees, down to about 70. So two hours worth, it should really drastically drop. After those two hours, you get another four to bring it down to a appropriate level to stick it in the fridge. So that way, you know, you don't have any chance of bacteria growing. The temperature danger zone, if you've ever heard of that, is between 40 degrees and 140 degrees. So getting that food down to from 140 to 40 is very, very important. Last but not least, I wanted to just take a little moment to talk about how important food safety is. You don't want to get sick. You don't want to get others sick or even members of your family or friends Food safety is very important to understand and practice on a daily basis. Foodborne illnesses, if you've ever known somebody or even yourself that's been affected by a foodborne illness, it doesn't treat you lightly. It could cause you time out of work, it could cause hospitalization, and it is a very important and serious matter. All right, so thank you all so much. Practice your good skills. I hope nobody gets sick this season. And be sure to check out HealthLink's website. We have a bunch of other nutrition education res resources underneath patient resources. Thanks, guys.